Everyday woman, woman, woman. Welcome to Everyday Woman. There are some major changes happening in the pop world. I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Live from Los Angeles, here's Everyday Woman. You and Everyday Woman. in the dating scene, I've realized men expect a lot on a first date. Mm. I'm so intimidated. There's a lot of pressure on us. You're dating, Anna. How do you feel? I'm not dating right now. I used to date. You used to date. Right now I'm on a little break, finding myself, you know, but uh, yeah, I used to date a lot. Yeah, but lot okay, but don't you think <laughs> men expect a lot out of us now? I think it's like the older generation, like if, if they were, uh, the younger generation is, I think they just want sex, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm just going to be okay, honest. Just that, just, you know, honest. that doesn't change. <laughs> no matter what generation you're looking at. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to go around it. I just said it. Yeah, younger go. generation, older generation, they all want the same thing. Yeah. But don't yeah. we all? <laughs> I mean, okay, but let's be real. Like uh, at some point, yes, but mm -hmm. not on the first date. When, you know, like when I was dating when I was younger, that I didn't even think about that. I grew up in a very conservative town, mm -hmm. and I was in a long-term relationship. And now, in my late twenties, I get you know sucked into this dating world, and it is weird and awkward. And mm -hmm. ew, I don't want to sleep with you. You cannot mm -hmm. expect me to pay half my bill and then get laid. So how do you, how do you find a guy? Because isn't it like I have yeah. sorry. you go on a date where you pay half the bill? Well, no, I've been on dates where guys expect me to pay half the bill. And I didn't expect right. it. And then at the end of the night, he's like, uh, puts his card down. He's like, well, we'll go have these. And I was like, what? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. You know what? Yeah. You know, that gentleman, would, first of all, uh, that gentleman would not get a second date from me. And yeah. actually, I'd probably give him the side eye for trying to expect him to have that. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I, my sister I, said I she went on a date with a guy and they went to Popeyes. First of all, that's a no-no. <laughs> and then, and then she, he had the nerve to say he had to go pee, and it was closing, and he went outside and pee pee <gasps> on the side of the car. No, he didn't. And I, she called me up. She was like, should I still go on a second date with him? This was the first date? Ask me to go on a second date. He probably knows the bus route, so leave him there. <laughs> okay, but okay. Madison, you expect a lot on the first date? I absolutely, absolutely expect a lot on the first date. You know, wait, I have to go back to the paying the bill thing. Yeah. The only time I ever pay a bill is if I want out. If I do not, oh. if I'm not having a good time what? and I want out, I will pay the bill and, and leave? thank you very much. Short, yeah. Right? But I yes, I do expect a lot. But I don't expect a man to, to pay for my bill. I want to be clear on that. But I so appreciate that because I do want a gentleman who would treat his lady mm -hmm. to that. I don't expect it, but I appreciate it. I think we get it twisted a lot because yeah. a lot of ladies want a husband. And so instead, they're really dating a boyfriend kind of material. So you need to know the difference. You're expecting, There's I want this, I want that. You pay my bills, you do this. And you want a husband. And really, he's really saying to you that, no, I'm just trying to be a boyfriend. Right. I'm not trying to go further than a husband kind of thing. So, I mean, I don't know. It's I've been women, out of the date scene Women for a tend minute. to look at the future. You look at the future and reach for it. Oh, you know, you know, deep with that. You women, deep with that. Women, all <laughs> like, we, we write down our names with his last name yeah. on the second date. And we're, we're like, there. oh, how do little hearts. Right here. Oh, no, no. No, no. I don't, I don't not jump, me. Not no, me. No, no. I, don't, I don't jump in like that. Um, yes, I'm, I date with a purpose. I'm only just now getting back to the dating world myself because I've been in a relationship for four years that I just got out of. But that said, in terms of like someone paying for the first date, it's about laying the kind of foundation mm -hmm. for the relationship you expect to have, okay? Because I grew up in a household mm -hmm. where my dad was the one who took care of everything. Even when we would go to dinner for his birthday party, mm -hmm. he would st still be the one to pull out the credit card. Aww. And my mom never mm -hmm. pulled out her purse. And sorry, that's what I'm looking I think for. that's a good point that you made because before, uh, well, since I've been taking a break, obviously, because mm -hmm. my, my last boyfriend passed away so right now I am just trying to find myself but if I were to date mm -hmm. I would find that even though I'm independent mm -hmm. and I can Absolutely. pay my own bills and stuff mm -hmm. I right. want someone to take care of me why not I deserve it and Absolutely. thank you to that person right now do you think that to show me that do you think that that might be something that men have a hard time with their expectations mm -hmm. like what we expect from them well I don't think men know how to manage their expectations nowadays mm -hmm. because they, they're dancing around all these feminists who might want to pay their side of the bill who don't want them to open their car door you know right. and so, Give a bad a lot, yeah and so yeah. there are a lot of actually nice guys there are gentlemen out there but they don't even dare to be gentlemen because they don't even know how women are going to receive right they don't it know anymore. how i love um, the car door opening one oh. of the things that i i, I started when i started got back into the dating world mm -hmm. um it was a little bit confusing at first 
And I have to admit, yeah. you know, there, I, I, there was a lot of pressure for the guy who was sitting in front of me. Mm. Because I, I already know who I, I know who I am now. Right. I know what I want. I know what, what I want in a relationship. And I have no problem laying that down. But I have a out. question, though. Like, how do you guys find these guys? Okay, like, well, it's not like back in the day where you can go to church and be like, oh, you cute. You know, cute. I mean, I have a lot of friends who date on the internet, and I've never done that. Uh, Isn't that yeah. scary? I've so tried that. On the I, I have a lot of friends who actually have been setting me up with their friends. So I've gone on these series of weird awkward blind dates where I don't even know who they are, but I'm just, you know, I'm trusting their judgment. I don't know why. You know, some of them have been, been gentlemen, but it's yeah. so weird when you don't know somebody. You know, how much do you let them in and I think it's give scary. into what they expect of you? And then even when they walk up and they're like, they want to kiss you, and they just kiss you, really? and it's weird. On the cheek, right? No! Right. I've had, like, so many guys just, just pull on, like, do you yeah, both have a just, <laughs> just, oh, no. Do you both have a do you try it? I mean, I, oh it well, I it's, well, you know what the expectation uh -huh. is then. Yeah, you know, but I have the, your internet thing like, I am not a freak. Don't, don't, don't try and lick me. And, and no. Chastity belt, I apparently. can take the yes. kiss. Just don't hold my hand. I, I'm a freak about holding hands. I can, I can kiss. I love to hold hands. It's too intimate. I, I'm sweet. Wow. I like a hand hold. I like a kiss uh, on the no. cheek. Open my door. We're still ladies, gentlemen. If you're out there, be gentlemen. We want that. We're every woman when we come back. <laughs> After this commercial break, more Everyway Woman. Are you an Everyway Woman? When Everyway Woman returns, Dr. Sherry Thomas and I will be talking about fibroids. Stay tuned. Here at Every Way Woman, we talk about everything, including taboo health topics. Today, Dr. Sherry Thomas is here to give us the 411 on fibroids. Dr. Sherry, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. What are fibroids? Well, <laughs> fibroids are, unfortunately, a very common process that occur in about 75% of women, where fibrous cells in the uterus, the uterus is where the baby um, is, uh, grows for mm -hmm. nine months, these fiber cells just get out of control and grow very large. I'm talking about the size of um, not just a grapefruit, but uh, five, six, seven week pregnancy. Wow. So your, your pelvis, your, your abdomen looks like you are pregnant, but in fact, you just have some fibroids. Now, this is intimate to me because I had a hysterectomy because I had a fibroid that was the size of like a five month fetus. So my stomach was out to here. So I'm very familiar with it, but what causes fibroids? Well, fibroids are genetically predetermined. Okay. If your mother had fibroids, your older sister, your aunt, you're probably going to have fibroids. They're also more common in different races. African Americans, about 90% of women have fibroids. Uh, Caucasian women, more like 75%. Is that is that attached to anything genetic? Is it food or? We, I mean, we don't know. Maybe a chromosome that causes the muscle cells of the fiber to just get out of control and grow. And interesting, they're mostly benign, but occasionally they can become malignant. And that's why you really want to see your doctor and follow up and have them checked. Okay. So tell me, what are some of the symptoms so a woman can know if she has fibroids? What are some of the symptoms? Well, the symptoms are, as you had, just your stomach's growing larger. Uh, also, and it was large. <laughs> oh, it, they, can, they can be all the way up and, and press up against the uh, lungs and diaphragm and cause shortness of breath. They also push against the bladder, so you have more urgency frequency against the bowel, so you may have problems with bowel movements or back pain. Um, with your periods, you may have irregular, heavy, heavy bleeding okay. to the point where you become anemic. So you can have a lot of symptoms, or but many women have smaller fibroids and they don't really know they have, and their mm -hmm. doctor just says, oh, I think I feel some fibroids on your exam and sends you for an ultrasound. And in fact, you have these fibroids that they follow over time. Okay, so when we talk about pain, how does a woman differentiate between fibroid pain and menstrual and menstrual cramps? Because if you're not familiar, you don't necessarily know which one is. How do you do that? Well, menstrual cramps usually occur during your period, but okay. fibroid pain, you'll have pain and pressure most of the time. Now, it'll become worse during the period, but those are the differentiating. With fibroids, you're going to always have that pain. Now, 
interesting enough, when I had my fibroids, I had them before I had children, and I also had my fibroid while I was pregnant. And I thought that there was a risk to my baby. Talk about having fibroids and being pregnant. Sure, it depends on where they're located. If the fibroids are located in the lining of the uterus where the child's growing, it may prevent them from actually growing or actually implanting and starting to grow. So some women before becoming pregnant actually have those fibroids removed so they can become pregnant. Right, and which was my situation because my fibroid was attached to my fundus. And so subsequently I had a miscarriage. And it's when I went to the doctor that he recognized, he said, you had an obstruction um, there. And so I had a myomectomy. And I was going to ask you, what are some of the options for removing your fibroids if you find out that you have them? Well, not all fibroids, as I said, need to be removed. Um, we watch them to see if they grow. If they don't grow, we wait because at menopause, a lot of times they become smaller. Okay. So if you're asymptomatic, you're not having pain, you're not having irregular periods, you're not bleeding, there's no reason to really do anything. If they start growing and they're growing rapidly, mm -hmm. uh, whether they're bleeding or causing pain, they should be removed because that's concerning. They may be cancerous. You know, Dr. Um, I was thinking of a young lady that I know, she's in her early 30s and she's having a lot of problems with her fibroids. And she went to a physician and they will not give her hysterectomy. How can someone be an advocate for her because she said, I don't even want to have children. I want it out. Sure. So <laughs> if a woman has finished childbearing or she says, I've had women in their 20s saying, I just don't want to have kids. I don't want to deal with them. Right. And I'm, I'm having severe pain, either endometriosis, fibroids, whatever. Um, there are some medications we can use okay. that actually stop the growth. And that's a medicine that stops the production of estrogen. And then ultimately a hysterectomy or removing the fibroids if it's just one or two large ones. But if a woman's finished having children and has uh, several fibroids that are causing issues, it's probably better to remove the uterus because mm -hmm. it turns out once you remove the fibroid, 50% of the chance they grow back. So why go through two procedures if you really know what you want? Which, which is interesting for my story because, again, before I had children, I had a fibroid. Then I had them removed. Then while I was pregnant, I had more fibroids. And then finally, I just said, take it. I don't want my uterus anymore because I was starting to have those problems. So I would encourage you know, women out there to really go to their doctors and get that looked at because there's so many wonderful options out there now for women that they don't have to deal with this pain anymore. Oh, absolutely. But as you said, it's so important to have that communication right. with your physician because if you tell me, I'm 25, but I have huge fibroids, and I just don't want to have kids. Yes, why go through both procedures? I, I couldn't agree more with you. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. Thank Before you, for you can take care of others, you have to take care of yourself. Stay tuned to Every Way Woman. We will be right back. Are you an Every Way Woman? Everyday Kitchen is next with Every Way Woman. Awesome. Are you an Every Way Woman? Up next, we have Manji from 88 Tequila exploring 88 dreams. We're back with Manji Rios and we are bringing the bar to our home. So welcome back. Today, of course, we're making another one of your fabulous tequila drinks. Yes, we're making the 88 dreams. Before we get all the way to dreamland, <laughs> uh, did you come up with this recipe? Um, yeah, it was kind of like a joint thing at a family barbecue. So we had a bunch of different things laid out and we're like, Let's just make some cool drinks. Let me guess, there's tequila at every family barbecue. Oh, yes. At every family occasion. <laughs> yes, there's always The tequila. Rios family equals tequila. Yes, the so Demon Rios family. Yes. The Demon Rios family, excuse me. <laughs> so obviously it's, you know, tequila 88, 88 tequila that we're talking about today. Yeah. And you're featuring the Blanco. Yes, this one goes with the Blanco just because the Blanco has less flavors it's it's the first one that comes out of the tanks so, so it's the youngest yes it's the okay. youngest out of all of them sure and why this one today just because it, it mixes better this one mixes better with really any other cocktails because it won't add that oaky wood flavor that the older ones have from the bourbon barrels because that's what it's rested in so it's got a sweeter more citrusy flavor to it do women prefer the sweeter drinks? Because I feel like tequila sometimes is like seems like a man's drink. Tequila is you you'd be no. surprised to find out that there is more women that probably drink tequila 
than any other type of liquor. And More women who admittedly yeah. drink tequila, because that's the thing. I feel like tequila only happens on like those girls' nights that we don't really yeah, the tell anybody you know, about. Exactly. We have events that we do call like margaritas and mamacitas. So, you know, it, it's that's a fun hot. way to incorporate it. It really is, and I love to entertain at home, and I'm so excited to be able to have something to serve. With tequila, that's not just a margarita. Exactly. Tell me how to make this cocktail. Okay, so we are going to start with some ice. Okay. And, and you know, typically with tequila drinks, I always see a rim on the glass. You do, but we like to change it up because not everybody likes the rim around the glass because it gets all over, it ruins your lipstick or your liner. I like gets a your salty hands rim. Sticky. <laughs> some people do, and that's totally fine. You could totally do some sort of like crystal sugar on this, or you could do just regular sugar on here, whatever floats your boat. Okay, okay. I think it's all about the garnish and the presentation exactly. too for me. You exactly. Know? Find the pretty glass. Is there a typical tequila glass, by the way, besides those little cactus glasses? Yeah. I know there's the whiskey <laughs> glass, there's the rocks glass. This is the tequila glass that I know, a shot glass. Yeah. This is how I know tequila. And, and our tequila is actually a premium sipping tequila. So to sip tequila, the best way to do that is in a Rydell. It's called a Rydell. It looks like a wine glass, but it's a little slimmer. You get the best pause, smells. Pause. You're drinking tequila from a wine glass? <laughs> that is classy. That is classy. I don't know anyone else who drinks tequila from a wine glass. Yes. yes. Okay, well, so it gets the best best smells. We don't have a Rydell, but we, just a regular, you know, eight ounce glass will do the trick. Exactly. Okay, exactly. sure. For sure. cocktails, pick your favorite glass, use it, and enjoy it. Okay. So we're going to do orange soda. Mm. This is a childhood favorite of mine. The nose on the orange soda. It just brings back memories, doesn't it? Yes, orange soda is always good. Good, good. I totally spelled that, by the way. Okay, so how much <laughs> okay, orange soda too. are we putting in there? I mean, this is I a would preference. Go, I would go about three to four ounces. This is just something we used for sure, now. Sure, sure. I'd yeah. like less soda, more tequila. What's next? Sounds good to me. So we're going to go ahead and get some tequila now, and we are using the Blanco. Sure. So this is a two ounce shot glass. You're more than welcome to use as much as are you like. Are all shot glasses two ounces, by the way, for the Not bar novice? all glasses. Um, some are one and a half, some are one, but a traditional bar will carry two ounce shot glasses. Okay, so a shot is typically two ounces. Yes. Which equals a glass of wine, which equals a beer. For all of those of you who are measuring your <laughs> drinks before you drive home or get your Uber, do not drink a drive. Okay. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pour that in here. Okay, pouring it in. Man, woo, that brings back memories too. <laughs> Those were not childhood memories. And then we're gonna get, this is cream of coconut. So we're gonna use a little bit I of I use this. that on my legs. Do you really? Well, I use coconut oil, isn't it the same oh, thing? I think it's a little different. <laughs> okay. Well, so I we're gonna coconut pour. oil is all the rage right now. I, I just like to mix it You're up. You're really going at it with that coconut oil, <laughs> aren't you? Okay, cream. Cream. Oh, it is creamy. Look at yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. I would oh. stop there, or it's okay. gonna taste like a pina colada. I like pina coladas. <laughs> All right. That tastes like vacation to me. Okay. What All else? All right. And that's it. And then we just add a little garnish. That's not it. Okay. I need some lemon. Yes. I need some mint. That you know, my so, my roommate always said a classy drink wasn't classy without mint. We toss in a lot. A sure. Slice of lemon. A little bit of lemon. And then we're just going to take a little bit of mint and throw that on top. And my and good friend nuts. Cheryl, who's got the best job on set, is going to do the tasting for me. Uh, what do we, how do we say it in Spanish? I mean, salud. 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 I mean, mm -hmm. oh, you don't drink your own creations. What kind of bartender are you? I will yeah. try some. Yeah, you should try some. Is Excellent. there any uh, um, other alterations to this cocktail? Can um, we make it a shot? You definitely could. You could pour it up in a shot glass, maybe okay. cut down some of the ingredients, just go halfway on everything. Sure, sure. Well, you can find more of those ingredients on everywaywoman.com. Thank you so much, Mandy Rios, for Thank being you. here. Cheers, Solo. I'm going to get a little nose on this one. <laughs> Are you an everyway woman? <laughs> Stay with us for tomorrow's stars. Are you an Everyway Woman? Everyway Woman celebrates tomorrow's stars, and today we'd like to welcome Naima to the show. Welcome. Hi. 
Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. We're really excited to have you. Take it thank away. Thank you, thank you so much. Hi, you guys, I'm Naima Tannenbaum. Thank you. Thank you. I just got back from a job interview. I need another round of applause for that. Yeah, thank you. I don't know, I'm not really too optimistic about it. I, I just, I don't think that I got this job, you guys. Because at the end of the interview, the guy looked at me and said, we're not hiring. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of messed up, right? Um, I come from a really dysfunctional family. Uh, my dad was an alcoholic and my mom had depression and I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> yeah. I was one molestation away from being a stripper. <laughs> yeah. I knew I was gonna have a hard time in life. Uh, like the first day of kindergarten when I got to school, this little girl comes running up to me and is like, she's like, hey, do you wanna play house? I was like, um, I don't know how to play that, but can we play apartment? <laughs> can we play with, can we play I'm staying with grandma and grandpa until some stuff gets straightened out? Because I will dominate. Um, my mom like couldn't even get through small talk. Her depression was so bad. We'd be at the grocery store. The checkout clerk is like, hi, Miss Tannenbaum, how are you today? Oh my God, oh my God, how am I? How do I look? Okay, first of all, I've been up since Tuesday with a migraine headache. Then they killed off my favorite character on Days of Our Lives. <laughs> And now I'm here, and you're yelling at me, asking me all about how I am. Be like, Mom, can you please just give her your coupons and your rewards cards so we can get out of here? This is so embarrassing. God. Um, what else? Oh, you know, these bill collectors, does anybody else have bill collectors calling them? Yes, thank you. They ask the dumbest questions, don't they? This guy called the other day um, and was like, hey, Naima, can you tell me why you're 124 days late with your car payment? Uh, yeah, I'm poor. <laughs> the, the student loan people, though, they need to figure it out. Um, this guy was like, hey, Naima, uh, you haven't made a student loan payment in about two months. What's going on? I was like, you know, you're the one that gave me seven years and $30,000 to go spend at Glendale Community College. <laughs> Stop asking me for your money. All right, you guys, I'm Naima Tannenbaum. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naima. Yeah. It's so incredible to celebrate a woman in a man's world. What oh, advice you. would you give to other fem female comedians out there? Oh, I would just say keep going. You know, they say it's a man's world, but women are funny. I think the times are changing, and people really want to see women do their thing on stage, so go for it. Well, I know we'd like to see more of you. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. <laughs> To find out how you too can match our donations for undergarments for needy kids, please visit everywaywoman.com. We'll see you next time. Stay funny, everybody. So, we're going to raise some love here. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I love it here. I will never leave. Really? Are you an everyway woman? Everyway Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Everyday Woman. This has been an Everyday Woman I'm production. I'm Everyday Woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah. I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah. Are you in Everyday Woman? I'm just waiting on sitting at home, staying just to wash my clothes. I'm gonna go and live my life. If that means working nine to five, cause I'm an everyday woman. I'm an everyday woman. Independent, no, I meant it. It's no surprise. Hard working 24 7. Man, I've got to tell them I'm an everyday woman. Are you an everyday woman? Whether I'm just waiting or sitting at home, staying just to wash my clothes, I'm gonna go and live my life. If that means working nine to five, cause I'm an everyday woman. 
I'm an everyday woman. Independent, no, I'm landed. It's no surprise. Hard working, 24/7 man.